Hi, Russ here. We had a few technical problems with this episode involving the lighting and the sound. Rest assured, we will resolve these for future episodes, but for now, I hope that you enjoy what we've managed to produce. Thanks for listening. Hello and welcome to episode 2 of the Clockwork Goblins Painting Table. I'm Russ and today we're going to be talking all about painting metal. In the Iron Kingdoms, metals are probably one of the most important things to paint. Warjacks have them, weapons have it, armour has it, there's metal everywhere you look. Uh, and we're going to be going over some different techniques today. I've got some models in front of you with uh, different metals uh, on display. We've got uh, some discoloured iron, we've got some brass, we've got some goldish effects, um, just to show the range of models that can have metals on them. Uh, I'm going to quickly talk about the uh, properties of metal and then we're going to look at some uh, reference photos and then get on with the technique. Um, the thing that makes metal interesting is the way it behaves with light. Uh, specularity is one of the key things which is the way metal has a very bright highlight area and uh, deep shading due to the way that light behaves when interacting with metal's reflective surface. Um, these are the things that we're going to be creating. So we're going to be looking for creating high areas of contrast on our metal. Uh, to get uh, realistic metal we need deep, deep shadows and bright, bright highlights. Often these two things fall quite close or even right next to each other and some, those are some of the techniques we're going to explore. When we're painting metals, we can, of course, just start with black and dry brush the snot out of it until we get something that we like. But uh, I'm going to be banishing black from my metal painting today just to give a bit more visual interest to what we're doing. OK, that's uh, my brief intro covered. I'm going to move these models away and let's take a look at some reference images and uh, then get into the technique. <laughs> So in this first image we can see all of the features of realistic metal, on account of this being a real suit of armour. Um, the things that we're interested in looking at are the high glossy highlights on the shoulder pads in particular. This is the metal specularity, um, the way it reflects the light. The deep shadows almost immediately next to those areas producing the contrast that we were discussing, um, uh, giving a sense of depth to the metal and all of the corrosion and dirt that we can see uh, around the arm pieces, around the uh, elbow joints in particular and uh, sort of spattered across the surface of the uh, chest plate as well. So that's a nice uh, image to be looking at, showing us a lot of the things that we want to see. These other images show just the variation of colour that we can see from corrosion and uh, we'll be trying to create some of these colour variations as we're painting uh, using a mix of paints and inks um, so that's uh, the corrosion on sort of iron based metals that we've looked at we're going to look now at verdigris and the discoloration that we get on bronze and uh, copper based metals So verdigris is a very strong colour, this turquoise colour, um, which you can mix or you can uh, uh, create using uh, particular paints. Games Workshop's Hawk Turquoise is a very good colour for this. As you can see, it can be very, very striking and stand out very strongly, or it can be quite subtle and uh, just discolour the metal slightly. And uh, we'll look at both of those things as we're painting. So uh, that's my reference material looked at. Let's... Uh, Grab a brush and start painting. Right, these are the parts that I'm going to be using to uh, talk about metal painting techniques today. Some pieces from the Kador Plastic Warjack Kit, um, which give me a variety of different surfaces that can be painted in different ways. Okay, here we go. As I've said, I want to use a warm iron technique and I'm banishing pure black from my painting. Now the trick to an effective metallic finish is a nice depth of colour. So I'm taking some dark silver here, let me move the axe out of the way, which is a, a bolt gun metal mix. I'm going to give my brush a rinse because I've got metallic paint on it. 
and I'm actually mixing that with PP Battlefield Brown, about 50-50. So I've got a deep, rich, warm colour. In fact, let's add a little bit more Battlefield Brown to that. Now, this has the same effect as darkening the paint with black, but it gives a bit more visual interest. It gives some tone to the colour as well as changing the value, the lightness. It also adds a richness to the colour. So I'm now going to just paint that on. Now, I haven't really watered down this paint very much, so I need to brush it out quite thinly. I'm just relying on the water brought over from washing the brush to thin this paint down because I want a nice strong cover colour. I could water it more but it doesn't need it as long as I brush it finely into all the detail. I'm going to base coat the whole axe head in this warm metallic colour and then give it a few moments to dry. Okay, we're back with the axe. It's had a chance to dry now. And as you can see, the metal is not very reflective. The effect of adding the Battlefield Brown is to reduce the reflectivity. That's because the uh, pigment in the brown has coated the metal flakes in the metallic paint, making it less reflective. This is actually something that we want because one of the contrasts that we're looking for as well as light and dark is with uh, reflective and less reflective areas of the metal. So without further ado I'm going to give my brush a quick rinse so my bristles are nice and damp and then I've got some Devlin mud here which as a fairly neutral but warm shading tone is going to add to the effect of warming the metal and I'm just going to brush that over the surface, encouraging it to settle around the edges of the metal where it meets the the head of the uh, the sorry the haft of the hacks where that bracket holds it to the handle. Okay, the ink has now dried on that. The wash is dry, and I'm going to start highlighting up this blade now. As you can see. It's not very shiny at the moment, but that's soon going to change as I build up some highlights. Now I could just dry brush this blade and that would give a really perfectly acceptable result. Bit of bolt gun metal over the top, bit of uh, silver to finish, but I'm actually going to paint on the highlights. It's just so I've got a bit of control. And what I'm going to do, I've got the original mix that I uh, started with here and I've just added a touch more bolt gun to the mix. And I'm just going to brush that onto the weapon and I'm avoiding the blade at the moment and then with a brush that's damp but with no paint on I'm just going to blur the edges just to soften that edge like that and uh, we want a bit of highlight on these metal fins just quickly brush that on and that's good. Okay, so I'm not going to do the other side, I'm just going to concentrate on this bit to start with. And now, I've got some silver paint which I'm adding to that mix. This is a bright silver, I'm using a Vallejo game colour, there we go. And I like this because it's got one of the highest specularities, the brightest metals of all of the silver paints that I've used. So I'm just going to brush that around the same area, like so. And then, finally, I'm going to get pure silver. So that's the Vallejo silver, completely unmixed with anything else. And uh, I'm just going to catch it on the very points of those fins, I'm going to run a line around the edge of the blade and then again, damp brush you can probably hear me sucking the water off the brush, terrible habit and I'm just going to blend in a bit of that silver 
And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to load up the brush with silver and then I'm going to use the edge of the brush, make sure we can see this, and I'm going to rub it about halfway down its length around the edge of the model. And what that's going to do is just put a thin line of silver, let's do it on the edge of the axe, just rubbing, and it's just picking up that very edge, like so. So you can see there, my blade's looking pretty nice now, and those edge highlights help start to bring that metal to life. Just going to blend a bit more bright silver onto there. Now, why have I not painted that blade apart from the edge? And the reason being, we're trying to create the illusion of a deeper shadow to accentuate the blade. And just to, to help that, I'm going to get some watered down battlefield brown. And I'm just going to run a line up the edge against where I've put that silver, like so. If I've gone over the edge a bit there, so I'll just clean that up with a bit of pure silver, and we're done. Now, that's my highlighting done. The last thing I want to do, just to finish this blade off, is a little bit of inking around some of the edges to give it a little bit more depth, and I'm going to do that no. Okay, got that axe a bit more centred up on the screen, sorry about that uh, earlier. And I've got some Games Workshop chestnut ink. Sadly, Games Workshop don't make this ink anymore, but um, several art manufacturers, um, including my good friends Windsor and Newton, do make a good chestnut ink. I believe the Windsor and Newton one may have a squirrel on the bottle, should you go looking for it. And I'm using that just to deepen some of the shadows with a chestnut tone. There we go. And again, right on the edge of that blade where I ran that colour earlier. I'm going to paint a stripe on and then with a, a fairly dry bristle brush, just pull that away. There we go. And that's my that's my axe blade. No, not a massively long process. I could have dry brushed it, but it's got some nice tones going on there, which I'm quite happy with. I'm not going to do the other side of the blade for the purposes of this. I'm going to take a look now at a colder steel. This is quite a warm colour. I'm going to take a look at a colder steel finish now. 